guys, Tarek with Cyclone FPV, and I'm actually going to be zooming through a uh, video today, um, and I'm checking to see if my stuff here is working okay for me to do some video uh, assistance from the computer as well, so bear with me a second. And I'm going to add the computer screen so that you guys can watch what I'm doing. So let's see what we got. All right, so anyways, uh, what we're going to, sorry, I'm looking here at the screen at the same time. What we're going to be going over today is going to be the... Um, uh the uh setting up of the qx7 okay um and we're going to set up the qx7 receiver and i'll show you the picture of that so that's going to be right here right so we've got the qx7 receiver and we've got the uh, r9mm module right here which uh i've got in my hand here and then we've also installed the r9m long range module in the back right here okay so i think i'm zoomed in a little too much let me kind of zoom out a little bit there my desk a little messy because i've been doing a lot of work today uh, but anyways, I had some questions about how to bind it and what to do with the firmware. So here's what I'm going to do. I have gone ahead and created the files for you so that all you guys need to do is go to the website and download, the, download them from Cyclone FPV and then follow these instructions. Okay, it's very important that you're going to follow these instructions or else it's not going to work properly. All right. And this way you're going to save yourself a lot of time uh, and uh, hopefully get everything taken care of that you need. Okay. So the first thing is that we've got our R9M loaded. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this on real quick. Now, I've done my firmware updates on Welcome this um, QX7. TX. But if you haven't done it, uh, you're going to need to go, and I'm going to put on the uh, computer screen here real quick, because you will need to go to um, the website. You need to go to the web, and you can go to Cyclone FPV website, right? Uh, and this is the new Terranus QX7 uh, page I just set up with some links here. But you are going to need to get your OpenTX software. So let me show you something real quick on some of the po posts that I've done. And I've got to see if I can uh, find these very quickly for you. Um, and there will be more added to this page, but I'm going to try to see if I can get you some tutorial links real quick. So if you don't have the um, software that you need, meaning the Tyrannus, uh, I mean, sorry, the OpenTX companion software, then please watch this video that I've got under here setting up the X90 Plus with OpenTX, because here you're going to have links to download the companion software, to down, uh, and that's really going to be mainly it. You don't need to download the card contents because I've already done it for you, and I've it, omitted the files you don't need. Uh, if you're using English-based, U.S.-based, right? And so um, just follow this video, uh, but make sure if you do not have the companion software that you get it, okay? Because you're going to need it to do this video properly, all right? So let me go back and show you what I've done now. Uh, on the website, I created a page here setting up the QX7, and what I did was I already downloaded the new card contents as of today, all right? And what I did is I, it's 111 megs compressed. When you uncompress it, it's like 130 megs. Most of that is going to be uh, sounds that are in the languages outside of English. Now, I've only edited this card contents folder to contain the English language sounds, okay? If you need anything other than that, you're going to have to get them on your own because I'm not including that in this download because that means the file that you're going to download for me is only 16 megs, all right, which is much smaller than the 100 and some odd megs. I then downloaded all the firmware that you need for the QX7, for the R9M, for the R9MM, for the R9 Mini, for the R9 Slim, I mean all of it. And I've put it into a folder that you will, I will show you how to insert into your firmware folder so that you can um, set up your transmitter properly so that you can do your firmware updates, link and bind, and not have any problems with RSSI signal, okay? So pay attention, we're gonna zoom through this pretty quickly, and the whole idea is I don't wanna waste your time, and I want you guys to be happy with what we produce out of this, okay? So right now we've got our radio going, okay? And um, uh, you're going to see the screen in the background, and one of the things you're going to need to make sure of is that you do have to have your OpenTX software. But before you do anything else, you're going to go to our page. So if you were at our homepage here, cyclonefpv.com, you're going to go to your news and posts, and you're going to go to tutorials. And there's going to be more plus sign drop down options later on, but right now I'm just going to show you this. First article that's going to be there as of today is going to be setting up the QX7. You can use most of this for your other radios as far as help, but these files are specific to QX7 only right now except for the firmware. The firmware that you can get from here, which is the contents folder, is for the um, module and for the receiver, so you can use that, uh, or you can ask me and I'll make a folder for you for if you're using X90 Plus or whatever, okay? So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to download this, I want you to click on the link called Edited Card Contents Folder. Click on that and it's gonna automatically start a download here, okay? And I am going to go to uh, my downloads folder and we're gonna find it right here that's our contents and ignore everything else because this is kind of some setup that i was worrying uh worrying about later to get to you guys as a matter of fact i'm going to delete some of these because it's not going to help you right now all right now 
This is the card contents folder. I want you to make a folder called QX7. That's gonna be specific to your QX7 model. Okay, so in the QX7 model, I'm gonna delete this folder here and I'm gonna leave everything else like it is, all right? All right, so I want you to create a folder called QX7, all right? And in that folder, I want you to create another folder called backup. Forget, do not worry about what you see right here. This is not important. Matter of fact, I'm just gonna delete it because I don't want you guys worrying about it. So I want you to make a folder called backup. Okay, now your new card contents folder, the zip file, I want you to drag it and drop it into the QX7 folder so that when you're in there, you see this. And I want you to go ahead and right click on it and left click on extract all. Okay, and I want that folder to be created in your QX7 folder. All right, so now you're going to end up with two folders in there, backup and your card contents folder. All right, once you extract it, I want you to go ahead and delete your zip folder. All right, now you have these two folders. Go back to the page and find the firmware contents folder link and click that. All right. And that's going to download and that's going to download into your downloads folder right here. Okay. And you are going to um, go ahead and take that and drop that into your QX7 folder as well. Now you have three folders in here. Extract it. Okay. And that's fine. You can extract it there. All right. Now, uh, and then I want you to delete the zip folder. So now you only have three folders that you're working with, right? You have your backup, your card contents, and your QX7 firmware. Now, I want you to open the QX7 firmware and I want you to highlight everything that's in here. All those files, highlight them, right click, and left click on copy, all right? Go back to your QX7 folder, go to your card contents folder, all right? And go to your card contents folder there, the subfolder, and then find your firmware folder and I want you to paste. And it's gonna ask you to overwrite the readme text and go ahead and replace it, okay? Now, go back to the card contents folder here, highlight them, let, right click, and left click on cut, all right? Go back one more. Now keep in mind where we're at. You're going back to the original card contents folder. So if you're in your QX7, you're gonna to go to this folder here and you're gonna right click and left click on paste. Basically what we're doing is now we're putting all the folders in the where they need to be and you're done. That's it. Now you can find this empty card contents folder, the subfolder of card contents, and you can right click on it and click delete. So by the time you're done, you have your QX7 folder, your backup, and you have your card content, card contents, and you can now delete the QX7 firmware. Now you only have two folders. Okay. In that card contents, you have all the files you need, less all the files you didn't need. And you also have a firmware folder now that is populated with all the firmware I downloaded for you so that you can have your R9MM, your R9M, and your QX7 up to date to fly with long range. Also, the OpenTX firmware that's on here right now is today's firmware for running 2.2.3, okay? In that, you have the Lua scripts, you have your um, uh, Flexport updates, you have your new uh, font um, from uh, to download, and I'm going to show you all these in just a second, but my point being is, is this is the firmware that you're going to update your transmitter with, okay? And I'm going to show you how to, even though I've done mine, I'm going to show you how to do it anyway, okay? So this is very important that you have it set up like this. Downloads folder, QX7, a backup folder that's empty, and a card contents folder that has everything that I asked you to put in there, the card contents, and then the download, and you drop it into firmware. If you have any questions about that or it doesn't look like this, Watch the video again or write me at Tark at Cyclone FPV and ask me how I did it, okay? But it's pretty simple, so just go back and forth. All right, now, once this is set up, I want you to do the following. I want you to go ahead and minimize the screen. You can minimize your browser, and I want you to go to your OpenTX software, and I want you to open it up, okay? At the same time, if your transmitter is on, I want you to go ahead and turn it off, okay? All right, now, you should have an SD card inside your transmitter down here. All right. If you don't, you need to get one <coughs> or the rest of this isn't going to help you very much. All right. I want you to get your transmitter ready to plug into the computer. So to do that, what you're going to do is you're going to take your two sub trims right here and you're going to hold them in, push them in towards each other. And while you're doing that, press the power button. And once you do, then let everything go. Press it, let go. Okay. What you're going to see here is your bootloader. And my version is 2.2.3. Let me kind of get a zoomed in thing here. All right. So uh, you're going to see 2.2.3, which is what you see here because I just did my firmware update. Uh, and um, at this point, when you see the screen, go ahead and plug in right here your um, USB. 
You're going to hear your windows pick it up and it automatically detects it, right? And should you have no problems. If you have any problems with your, your drivers to make that work, you let me know and I'll get it taken care of, okay? So we're going to give it a second because the computer is also going to read that you have an SD card inside. And it's very important that you pay attention to this next step, all right? So let me go ahead and minimize this now. We're going to go back here because what we want to do is we want to make sure that your computer sees your, uh, there they are, right there. Okay, so you gotta wait until you see that pop up. All right, that means that it sees your drives. Now, my USB drive, my SD card drive already has all the software on it. Okay, so, you, so you've got your card contents folder, right? And it's sitting right here. And um, what we wanna do now is if you have stuff on here already, meaning if you've been using this controller and you don't wanna mess with it too much, then you do not have to do this next step by deleting everything, okay? Um, but we still have the firmware that you're gonna need to add to your uh, controller to be able to update the firmware on the um, uh, controller, the, the, the um, receiver, and the module, okay? So if you, if you do have uh, software that you wanna save and you don't wanna mess with this and you've got models and everything, that's fine. If not, then what I recommend you do is I recommend that you go ahead and just delete all this, all right? And just go ahead and click yes. And let's wipe out the card and we're, we're not going to format it because I see this thing hang up way too many times when I try to format the card. We are just going to delete, delete the contents, okay? Now, if you've opened my files, which are right here under downloads, like I said, and then QX7, the card contents are already here, okay? Along with the firmware that I've sent you. Again, uh, now I took my models out and I'm going to go ahead and put them back in now because I want my models to be on my card. And if you have anything like that, you may want to back these things up. It's up to you. But if you're new to it and you want to do this, this is how you would do this, okay? And this is going to also include doing a firmware update on your controller, okay? So what we've got is we've got our card contents folder with everything that we said about the firmware and everything is in here that you need. And uh, we also have on our D drive, everything has been wiped out. Now, like I said, if you didn't want to wipe it out, then you will just add the files that I've sent you, which are basically the firmware files, okay? Um, all right. So now we're going to go back to our OpenTX, and the first thing we're going to do, now I've already done the updates here, but the first thing we're going to do here is we are going to go ahead and do a um, card content uh, uh, synchronize, right, between the, two, between the card on the transmitter and the um, contents in our folder. So go ahead and click Synchronize SD, okay? Uh, and it's got no card detect. Let me go ahead and just close this Tyrannus program and see if I can open it again and see if it'll detect it, okay? And let's see, sometimes if it's open before I do that, then it'll give me an error. So let's see if we can make that happen, okay? So let's try that again. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and just tell it which folder is our radio folder. And we know that in this case, it's gonna be drive D. So just click select, okay? And that way it's gonna be. Now on our card contents, um, we are going to make sure that we are in the right card contents folder. And to do this, if you're brand new to the QX7, you wanna make sure that you go into your settings and you go to your radio profiles and you would create a new profile, okay? You would add a radio profile and you're gonna name it like this one is called QX7. Make sure you are selecting the right radio. If you have the profile, make sure you're in the right one. And if you don't have the radio profile, then just click add radio profile. Make sure you drop down to find your QX7, which will be the X7X7S and name it something. Now I'm gonna show you the setup part of this real quickly. Since I've already done that, once you create your radio, you can go to settings and here's what it should look like. Okay, oh, that's X90 plus, my bad, hold on. Let me go to radio profile QX7, and then let's go to um, settings. And so the firmware that I've downloaded that's in your firmware folder right now is the following. It's got the scripts, it's in the no heli version, it's got the flex R9M updates, and it's got the new font, okay? It is for the QX7 or QX7S, and here's where you're gonna wanna do the following. On your card contents folder, make sure to select the folder that I gave you. So under QX7, you're gonna do card contents, that's your folder. Click select folder. On your backup, remember that backup folder I told you to create? Go to downloads, go to your QX7, go to backup, that's your folder. Click okay. Now, I have mine set for mode two and TAER, uh, and I also have it set to uh, write the firmware after download and append the ver uh, firmware version number and blah, blah, blah. Try to make your screen look like this at least to start and you'll be just fine, but this is the firmware that you've received. This is the one that's in your firmware folder right now, okay? Under application settings, I have everything set like this, again, with my automatic backup folder set to that backup folder that I told you to create, okay? So click okay. And then from here, what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and sync, let's synchronize our SD card, okay? And everything's set right here, so we're gonna click okay. And we're gonna copy everything over and you can just show the details here, all right? 
all the firmware, all everything that I've done. Now, if you did not delete the contents of your card and instead you added to it, all you're gonna see change is the folders, the, the firmware that I've given you, okay? So we're gonna go this route and we're gonna let it run. There's 600, or 362 files that we need to uh, synchronize. Now, what I did in giving you a, a folder that was uh, edited was, it's a very small folder, a lot of files were removed, like I said, about 100 uh, megs of, um, oh no, 115 megs of audio was removed, okay? We did put back about 10 megs of firmware updates, okay? So you really have what you need to get a new QX7 up and running. And if you already have this stuff, then you also have now the firmware to update your R9M, your R9MM, your R9 Slim, your R9 Mini, and so forth, all right? Now, we're gonna wait for this to get done real quick. And uh, in the process, let me, let, me, let me do this real quick. Okay, so while this is running, and you can see it running down there in the corner, right? Oops, the other way, right there, okay. Um, one of the things that I want you to keep in mind is this is to set this up and this is the way that I recommend it, all right? This is the way that I know it works for me. This also is a way to eliminate RSSI signal problems or anything else. I am only sticking to the R9M uh, and the R9MM or M Lite updates in this video. I am not doing any flex updates. I am not doing any um, F port updates right now. I'm keeping to the basics so that you can learn how to bind it, fly it, and get going without having any problems, okay? So here we go. So getting back to this now, uh, we can see that our uh, updates are done, all right? So you can close this. And if you go to your D drive now, you're gonna see all the contents are back. And if you go to firmware, you're gonna see everything that I had here. This is the firmware I just downloaded today that works perfectly with 2.2.3 and the options that I showed you under your settings tab right here, okay? Now, if you don't like these options, you wanna download your own firmware, go right ahead. But I'm telling you that this, is, this will work for what you need and it's a great way to start, okay? So we're gonna close this out. And what we wanna do is, for those of you that haven't written the firmware yet, you can do it two ways. You can either write it from this program, all right? Or you can write it from the controller itself. So let's just say you wanna write it from the firmware, or from the program, okay? So you wanna go ahead and click write firmware to radio, and you wanna make sure that you load the right one, so that's gonna be in your firmware folder that I sent you right here, okay? Click open, all right? Now, the initial firmware file was this very long file that the transmitter won't read. I have shrunk it down, all right? So I've tried to take all the hassle out of it for you. So just go ahead and click write to TX, and you're gonna see it go, and when it's done, it's gonna, it's gonna say it's done. Okay, and now you click close. All right, now, here's where you need to pay close attention. Now that you're done with this, we wanna go ahead and eject the radio because we still have to do the bootloader, all right? And that hasn't been done yet. And then I wanna show you about doing your firmware updates, okay? So, uh, we're gonna go ahead, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and close our OpenTX companion. And then we're gonna find our USB ejection, uh, eject thing here, the little icon. Right click on it and left click on eject Tyrannus, okay? And then your little USB stick may jump around like this one does. And then when I try to click it, it moves again. Right click on it and click eject USB drive D. Make sure to do this, guys, because you could damage your drive if you don't. All right, now pull out the USB cable, okay? All right, so at this point, we are now looking at our main screen again. We've already written the firmware. Please understand that that is not the bootloader. That is just the firmware. We've already done it. So you don't have to do anything else but go to exit, okay? Welcome to Open TX. And you may see your little errors when it starts up. Fail citizen. Okay, now, now the next thing to do is we're gonna to go to your bootloader, okay? So go ahead and hold your menu button down and then press page once and go to your firmware folder, okay? And then from there, you're gonna see this file, OpenTXX7, that's the one I sent you and put you in your firmware folder, right? So hold that down and click flash bootloader and it's done. Okay, now hit exit, excellent. Now, if you were to turn off your controller, right? Okay, now you could, you could either Hold these in, hold your, uh, hold your um, trim in, and then press the power button real quick again, and you'll see now the new bootloader version is up at the top, right? Or you could just go to, TX. to your menus, right? Like long, long, row, long hold the menu, on. and then click page, click page again, click page again, and one more time, and now you're gonna see your version is 2.2.3. Everything else looks really good, okay? So it's got everything down there, firmer version 2.2.3, everything's good, all right? Click exit. Now we're at our main screen. The other folder I gave you, hold your menu button down for long, then when you get to the screen, press page. Under firmware, you're gonna see folders. QX7 firmware, R9M firmware, R9MM firmware. In each of those, you're gonna see different folders. Now, what I've done is I've separated these to flex firmware. If you wanna run flex firmware, that's not part of this video right now. 
these are the basic firmware that you need to do your R9MM and R9 Mini updates, okay? So if you were to click the first one, and they're in order by date. I put the dates on the front of the files for you so they would be in order. The way FrySky does it, it's at the end, and if the file name's too long, you can't read it all. So I put it in the other order for you. You click the first one, and you're gonna see. I've already removed the European version. This is all USA-based. So you will click, and you will hold this down, and what you need to do is I have the R9MM right here. Now I've done it a little bit different because I soldered the wire so that I could also power it up to show you how to bind it. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna need a cable, right? And the cable is actually gonna go in the following order, ground, positive, S, S port, okay? So black, red, yellow. And we sell these on our website at Cyclone FPV if you need them. But uh, if you can get one or if you've got one, and you're gonna go ahead and plug it into these, these pins down here in this order, black, red, yellow. So plug it in, let me get mine situated. There we go. All right, and on the R9MM and R9 Mini, you are gonna do in the following order. If you're looking at it with the antenna up, and I'll show you this diagram, you're gonna plug into the V in, the ground, and the S port, red, black, yellow. In that order, make sure they're on there so that it can read it. So we're gonna go ahead and look at this like this. If we need to flash our R9MM, R9 Mini, whichever first, hold, long hold your menu button, press page once, go to your firmware, Go to your R9MM folder that I just that you have now, click it, and cl select the first firmware that comes up. Press it, go down to the file, hold it, wait for the menu to come up, and then select Flash S port. And watch what you're gonna see, okay? You're gonna see the lights blinking, and that means it's writing. You're gonna see green and red, and I'm gonna lay this down now because I don't wanna hold it. But you're gonna see green and red blinking, and that means it's writing, and you can see on your screen that it's writing. You have three files to do this for, and that's it, to do the basic <coughs> proper update so that you can bind and have uh, good telemetry without any RSSI signals, okay? So just follow this through. It takes a few minutes, but it's really important that you pay attention to this, guys, because if you don't and you load, <coughs> I'll be very honest with you, you load the files out of order, uh, you load the um, uh, flex firmware, or you load the uh, uh, F-port firmware, or whatever it may be, and you start crossing them around, you can very well end up with errors uh, when you get the RSSI errors, for example, okay? So we are sticking with the basic right now just to get this working, all right? So we're gonna let the first firmware go, and it's gonna take just a minute. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hurry so that we can show you how to bind this and you can get going and flying really quickly, okay? just takes forever. Sorry. And that is my air or sol spray smell good stuff if you hear that sound in the background. All right. So we're almost done with our first um, almost done with our first file. All right. And then once that's done, you're going to go and you're going to go scroll up to the double dots, press it, go down to the next file, press it. Now, you have your options here, okay? We're not running F port right now, so I want you to stay out of the F port options. You have the R9, the R9 Mini, which is the R9 MM or Mini, and then you have the R9 Slim. Since we're not doing F port, there's only one file here that applies to this update. We're gonna go to the R9 Mini, which is R9 Mini or MM, and we're gonna use the FCC.FRK file. We are not using the F port file, okay? Not for this one. So hold it down, select Flash S port, press it, and it's gonna automatically start doing the second firmware update and please be very careful guys these firmwares can they, they seem very simple but if you select the wrong one you could you know end up with a, a receiver that um, experiences really bad loss of signal uh, the quad falls out I mean we've I've tested every kind of scenario or a lot of them and they, they can be pretty bad I mean you can uh, be flying one minute next minute you know you've got a loss of signal and boom that's it your quads down why? Because we did not load the firmware properly, all right? Or we loaded all the firmware that they created, and that is not what's expected. You stick with the specific type. You want to do the F port firmware updates, and you stick all F port. You want to do the flex firmware, then you do the flex firmware. Um, and they have them integrated. But uh, if you start mixing them together when they shouldn't be, you're going to end up with a problem. So just follow these files, and I've tried to put them in order so that they work for you. All right, enough talking about it. We're just going to wait for this next file to load, and then we only have one more, all right? And then I'm gonna show you what to do for your R9M, all right? Now, I'm gonna hold off on doing the R9M for you, uh, like doing them all because it can take a little while, but I'm gonna show you which files they are and then assume that I've done them because I did, 
and just do them the way I'm telling you to do them and you'll be just set, okay? All right, we're almost done with the second one. Okay, now we're done with that one. So scroll up to the two dots again. Now you can go to your third file, okay? Click that. And again, we're gonna do the same thing. We're not doing F port, so we're gonna go to the R9 Mini FCC. Hold it down, flash S port. That's it. You're gonna see um, another folder there when we exit and it's for the Flex software. I'm not loading that right now, okay? So um, we will cover that in another video right now. Uh, stay out of that folder, but it is there for you so that when you do wanna to go to the Flex update, you don't have to go searching for the files. You now have them on your SD card and you're good to go, okay? And I will try to do that for all the controllers. The X Lite I'm gonna do next. The X90 Plus I've already done, but I'm gonna to try to kind of clean it up for you and give you a card contents folder on that one too. And again, if you already have the card contents, um, you can either take your models and your Lua scripts and whatever it is that you have and hold them out, or you can just add my uh, firmware uh, files or what have you to your firmware uh, folder. I mean, however you wanna do it, but this is, some of this is for people who are just getting their uh, radios and they don't have any idea how to do this part. So that's why I put that together for them, okay? Got my little Lego guy. I wanna say what's up to my son. Sorry, these Lego guys are here for my youngest son, Jaden. He loves Legos. And I have these two guys here and they keep a watch of my table because I'm always looking for stuff that I put down that I can't find. So he gave me these as uh, some help. I'm gonna put my little jackhammer or whatever this is, little hammer in here. All right. We're almost done, okay? And then we're gonna to go to the R9M module and we're gonna show you how to do that one, all right? Now we've already upgraded your uh, radio to 2.2.3 for OpenTX, so that's the first thing and that's the excellent uh, progress there, all right? If you haven't done that and you're here, you skip the step. You need to go back and do that first. All right, so now we're gonna scroll back up to the two dots and like I said, you're gonna see this Flex Firmware folder. Stay out of it unless you wanna do Flex Firmware and you can wait for the video that I do on that. So go back two dots again and now you're gonna see where you have the QX7 firmware. Stay out of that for right now. You don't need that either. Um, but you do see the R9M firmware. So click that real quick. And you're gonna see that I have it separated again. And again, you're gonna go in order. So let's look at the first one. I'm not gonna do it because it's gonna take forever, but I wanna show you which one, so take note. First folder, click it. There's only one file. Load it, and when you load it, I'll do this one, and I'll show you how. Hold it down, and this time you're gonna click Flash External Module. I'm not gonna finish this now because I've already done it. But make sure you do that, press your button, and when it's done, you'll be right back at this screen. Two dots, go to the next one, click it. Same thing again, hold it down, flash external module, go back to your two dots, go to the third one, click it. Again, hold it down, flash external module, and then go back to the two dots, and then the fourth one. Again, you do it, and you will flash the external module, okay? So once you're done with those four files, you're done. Hit exit you're back at your radio. Now it's time to bind this, okay? And we wanna see if the RSSI is gonna hold because if it doesn't, you're gonna know very quickly when it shows you bars and it takes them away and says, lost, signal found, signal lost, signal whatever. The annoying thing that half of us heard when we were trying to set these up when they first came out. So take out your, uh, uh, take out your receiver, now you're done with it. Now I have a AC to DC converter here. So I'm just gonna put five volts, that's why I have these wires soldered in here. I'm gonna put five volts in here. Now remember, if you're getting ready to hook this up to your flight controller, look at the instructions. You're gonna use the voltage in, the ground, and you're gonna use your S bus out, okay? These are the things that you're gonna be using to be able to run this properly, all right? Your S port right now, none of that right now is gonna matter. We're talking about uh, this. <coughs> For my demonstration, I'm only using positive and ground. Everything else doesn't matter because I don't need those to bind to show you. So I'm gonna power it up. I'm gonna show you the light here. Now I've already bound it, but I'm gonna go ahead and um, let me see, I'm gonna turn this off and I'm gonna show you how to bind it properly, okay? So let me click this menu button and all you're gonna do is click it real quick and you're gonna go to your model here and you're gonna hit page. I'm on this one it's called Big Quad, host. hit page and I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tell it to bind, okay? And I'm gonna say, I want telemetry on. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with this, when you have an R9M or a module in the back, you have two options here, you have an internal RF Usually your radio will come like this. External is off and internal is gonna be on like D16, where is it? Right there, okay? This is what it usually looks like if you're not running a module in the back, right? Problem is, is you need the external module on. 
Problem is, if you leave the internal module on, you cannot run telemetry on the external. Let me show you what I'm talking about. External RF, we're going to turn it on. And we're going to go to R9M FCC, OK? Now, if I want to bind at this point, and I hold the bind button down, my options are 1 through 8 or 9 through 16 telemetry off. There's nothing that says telemetry on. This is a problem. So what you want to do is you want to go to your internal. Let me find that real quick. I kind of zoomed by it real quickly here. Uh, where did it go? Darn it. OK, so you're going to go to your internal, and you're going to turn it off. OK, so under mode, click it, turn it to off. Go to your external and leave it to R9MFCC. And now when you go to bind, you see your telemetry options. OK, so we're going to go 916 telemetry on, and we're going to hit it. All right, now I don't have anything bound yet, OK? But while that's beeping, assuming you haven't bound your transmitter yet, you're going to go ahead, hold the bind button down, and you'll feel it click, and plug in your LiPo and watch the light. Okay? You see the two lights? They're green and red, right? And the red light starts blinking rapidly. Let go of the button, turn off or unplug your LiPo, okay? And when it powers off, press your enter button right there and stop the binding. Hit exit, hit exit, go back to your main screen, plug in your LiPo. Now watch the lights, okay? There we go. Now pay attention. What we're looking for right now is we're wanting to make sure that our light stays green, doesn't bounce back and forth, okay? And that because when we don't have the firmware updates done properly, you'll see this light going from green to red, green to red, green to red, and you'll see signal lost, signal recovered, signal lost, annoying crap that we hear, right? So at this point, we know we can test to see if we have signal. One, we have a solid green light, but watch, okay? If I hold the power button down on my transmitter and I turn it off, where did my light go? My light automatically turns red. That means I've lost signal. Go ahead and turn it back on. Welcome to Open TX. Give it a second to find it. Acro mode on. Light will go green, and there's our signal bars. That's what we wanted. When you don't have the last firmware loaded, the one that was important that they just did to fix the RSSI issue and telemetry issue, you will start hearing this signal loss, signal recovered, signal loss, signal recovered. It's obnoxious, and it's because the firmware has been put in wrong or hasn't been put in at all. This is how you bind. This sucker's ready to go, okay? So this is step one. I wanted to introduce that to you guys, try to help one of my customers out that needed some help with it. I hope that helps y'all. If you have any questions, hit me up at Tark at CycloneFPB.com. Just know that I'm here to help you, so I'll put any videos out that you need regarding this radio, everything else. We've got everything in stock, so and I do them for free. Send me a request, and I'll knock it out for you. Step one, to get your long range going. And by the way, on the back, just to let you know, you will see your light here. Okay, if you're not able to see this light, it means you have not activated your external module. So follow that what I told you earlier. All right, guys, that's it for now. Um, if you have any, like I said, if you have any other questions, let me know. Let me see what I'm doing here. What have I done? I'm trying to get this to stop. There we go. All right, I think that is it for now. Yes, there we go. There's my big face there. All right, guys, if you have any questions, hit me up. If not, have a great flight. Dry, uh, fly safe. Don't do anything stupid. Stay away from airports. God darn, I'm getting tired of hearing about this. And uh, we will see you soon, okay? See ya. Bye.